Hello there everyone and welcome back to Kitty Plays Danganronpa and this is episode 13 and we are still investigating this murder of poor, poor Chihiro and we are done in the girls locker room and the boys locker room I believe I don't think we need to go back in there so Oh yeah, we need to go back to the library because that's where Makoto said he was going to go back to. So, let's go back there then. Since it's like right here. I mean, duh. Because that extension cord that was wrapped around Chihiro. Is that a different one? Or is it thick layer blah blah blah? Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. Oh, well, you know... How the lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see. It's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on. And it was definitely right here. Yep. Oh, that's right. Byakuya was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Yep, it's the one wrapped around Chihiro. So. Okay. I remember seeing the box it was in in here. Or something. I don't know. The wooden box is empty. The extension cord was in there before. Yep. Sure was. It's a document about the secret council revealing the kind of truth a commoner shouldn't go near. So I guess I'd better not. I want to take another look at Genocide Jack's case file. Hmm, I know it was around here somewhere. Huh? It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that is Byakuya. I can't think of anyone but Byakuya. Yep. So where is that turd face? He's somewhere. So let's see, do we go back to like his room or something? Cause like, I don't know. Or like, maybe he's still like where um, Toko is locked in her room. Like maybe he's standing guard or something with Hina. Still, I don't know. I'll go look and check. Oh, there's Taka. Sorry, Taka. Got no time to chit chat. Gotta go find the turd face. AKA Byakuya. Eh, I ran into stuff. Yay, go me. Okay. Now let's see if he's still back here. Oh no, they're not. Okay. Um, well, let me find his door. It right here. This is Byakuya's room. I doubt there's any clues here. But, but where it- oh wait, duh. I know how I can check where he is. I mean, hello. Okay, dining halls where Hina's at. Warehouse Celeste. Okay. We just ran into talk earlier. Main hall- wait. What? Okay. Just random. Where is that turd? Archive. Does it. Is this someone's. There's like. Oh, right. We were just there. Hello. Okay. So where the hell is he? Ugh, whatever. I just don't know. Like, eh, whatever. Um, maybe Hina knows, like, where he is, because she was with him last, I guess. I don't know. Hey, Hina, where's the turd face? It's been a while since I played, so, like, oh, Hina, how's Toko doing? Hmm. Same as before, she won't come out, and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. You left her? My head 
was all swimmy and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. But don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Of course. <sighs> There's two things I'm sure God created, outer space and donuts. Really? Hmm. I bet you Hiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Hmm. I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Well... Yeah, she was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the girls much. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's true. And it wasn't just us either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Hmm. I don't know. She talked to the boys all the time. Yeah. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? Well, I won't make any comments right now. Ah. Oh, wait. Maybe. Maybe she was just used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. So yeah, where's where's Mr. Turdface? Okay, so let's see. Should we go back to the second floor unless someone's in here? I which I doubt, but. I'll just go in the warehouse since I remember that's one place you need to go for this investigation, so. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> This warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then you did find something. <laughs> Very well, I will tell you and only you. Actually... Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What? Really? Indeed. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assumed she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this would ever would have none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. Wow, Celeste. So apparently, she went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Oh, there we go. That's it. So I guess I forgot we never do run into Byaki and are like, Hey, I want to see the um, files again. So, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The class trial. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> 
See you soon! Begin the class trial, or... It's about to begin. Yep, let's do this. The red door is right through here. No, duh, it's red. <sighs> I almost slipped that out, but whatever. Okay. At least I stopped myself. And everybody's here. Ahem! Oh wait, not everybody's here. I almost forgot. We're missing one person. Ahem, so is everyone ready to... What? Hmm? Am I blind? Or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come on. Kidding! I'm just kidding! How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time! What are you gonna do? Okie dokie! I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming! Just one moment, please! <laughs> Poor Toko! And just like he said a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. I feel sorry for her. <laughs> I don't know what that was just now, but whatever. I told him I t didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. <laughs> terrible! You're t terrible! Phew! <laughs> so now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle on the elevator and let's get this show on the road! <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro... Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek, nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. And that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Okay, let's just mosey, shall we? We have no choice, right? We have to do this. It's true. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions. Couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally... It came to a sudden stop. <laughs> what do you think? I redecorated! Isn't it so fresh? <clears throat> Isn't it so exciting? <laughs> Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Nice. Good, good. You're rip raring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well? Okay, then. Let's get this show on the road. Thrills, chills, kills. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, deadly deception, deadly betrayal, deadly riddle, da -da 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 deadly class trial. Dun, dun, dun. And I'll save really quick. Okay. Oh, okay, it's all okay. So, you can only eat two bullets at once. Oh, wait, am I not gonna need bullets? Again? Okay, well... Whatever. Let's go! Let's begin with a basic explanation. Yeah, you yeah, we already out, know. Then I'll punish everyone beside... Okay, then. So, first off... Let's talk about the murder weapon! First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. 
which of course we already know is obvious, so like... Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma find, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Oh. Interesting. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Or Chihiro. The weapon had to be the scene of the crime. This, there was something with the blood stick. Yeah, I know it's obvious. Chihiro's fatal injury. <sighs> It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Interesting. I pressed wrong, but god damn it. certainly would make for a powerful... Poor Chihiro. Chihiro's, it appears it was... According to the Monokuma file, what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, that's wrong! Sorry, hero, but that's wrong! Okay. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell? Found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You... looked at her head wound? Yes! That's so creepy! <laughs> wow, Hifumi. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Do you, Biakia? Because I wonder. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? New element, blah blah blah. Like I said, I'll do these for other people. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reaction. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way, just shoot it. Press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim when you have your silencer out. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. In which case, you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck and have fun! The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But, that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it! No, that's wrong! I... might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth, so let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. No, Hifumi, you're close, but completely wrong. Ah, uh, no. 
It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know. If I'm not mistaken, it has to, it has to do with the positioning of the body. A gun! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Well, there you have it. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! What? what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this got to be so complicated? It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko. The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? Yep. Oh goody, Hangman's Gambit. Okay, where's the O? There it is. No, I didn't mean to get this. Okay. Now I understand. Yay, he understands. Good job, Makoto. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. A gun! When it changed after You're she fainted. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Yeah, she's totally crazy. I'm fine, I'm fine! Yeah! Whoa, was that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard. The world has a front and a back, blah, blah, blah. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. 
afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her, of killing even more people. <laughs> how? Yeah, how can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No, what she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Darn, it is because I didn't realize. Just kidding. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? Hey now, to uh, Togami, you're not talking to Genocide Jack right now. You gotta realize that. There are two different personalities. Toko does not like to kill people. He doesn't even realize that, you know, this is Toko, not Genocide Jack he's talking to. <sighs> but whatever. I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? You don't mean... Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... Oh goody, my favorite part! Wow, hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? <laughs> there we go! Yes, yes, you... What the heck? <laughs> What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? <laughs> Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. I love her. I'm about to say that now, I love her. Intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Oh, totally. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> this is the murderous fiend genocide jack this is this is this is beyond insane um miss jack uh, uh, jill can i ask you a question what's up 
some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! <laughs> Just kidding! I'm not the mastermind. Then it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! Wow, that's insulting. And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> Dot. This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting! Very, very, very interesting! But sorry! As much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit! Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth! Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah! I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Hmm, no. I believe her. Obviously. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but... But something's still bothering me. What she said. I need to get some more details about all of this. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi! Huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No, it what does more not. What proof ah. do we need? <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. <sighs> so I'm gonna fast forward you here. Say that. Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would... Oh, an alibi! Huh? Now we're talking. This time I won't miss, damn it! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof? God damn do you it! Need? Give it up. You killed her. I hate this. Sorry, but I you say that. But perhaps if you had an oh, an alibi, huh? When you compare your past murder, the modus operandi matches completely. Ha! Gotcha. No, that's wrong. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. Because they're not, and I know the difference, it's like plain as day. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. She really does. I mean, you can tell. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. 
There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and stomach. Here you'll see a clear difference. A gun! Fatal injury, duh. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? Exactly, like... I mean, duh. And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing <laughs> killing people to cooking? <laughs> Seriously, though, like, come on. So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. A gun! Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? Yep, it was an extension cord, not scissors. Two completely different objects. They use some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement! Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? <laughs> Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Yeah, he, well, yeah, he kind of is. Big Mac, are you referring to me? <laughs> I love the nickname Big Mac. Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case! There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. Yeah, it's plain as day. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as day why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Hmm, let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims, and Chihiro didn't fit it? If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Because Chihiro was a girl. Because she only killed men. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Yeah, they were all men. Or boys. Whichever. Ken Harada, Tetsuhiro, blah blah blah. All dudes. There was just no end to it. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! The hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! side of me just hates it. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full-fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, <laughs> you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. <laughs> I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly car! Wow. Lowly car.
her. Ha! <laughs> you got told to told Togami. You're a fat ass turd, and we all know it. I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect. That does make some amount of sense. I mean, duh. Because if she did, then she'd be the only culprit or, like, suspect. So, I mean... Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? <laughs> Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? You spoke too soon, Nifumi. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Da -da -da -da! Yep, she's fully equipped. <laughs> she's fully equipped! <laughs> exactly what I said. That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong! You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you! Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot! <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway! <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore! Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? Yep. But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. Yeah, a certain fat turd. One person who could have copied the genocide jack cases. It's the fat turd. Where is he? Where's, where's the fat turd? You, fat Just turd. <laughs> Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Exactly my point. Plus... You'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Yeah, he's silent. Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Still silent. Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Oh, I know. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. Yeah, he wanted to start with the girls' locker room. How would he know there was a dead body in the girls' locker room? before searching. And plus, since he's a guy, wouldn't he want to search the boys first? I don't know. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? Yep. The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? The fact we didn't know Chihiro was dead before going in there? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Byakuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. 
Next, we're going to add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, then you'll memorize the weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When's the best time to flashback? Well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun! <sighs> So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! No, if The we... victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd taken me with you. Okay, I know where I have, what I have to do now, okay. So, you said Byakuya was Oops. acting kind of weird before we found the body. Press the wrong button. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. Bam! No, that's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Exactly my point. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences between this case <clears throat> and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there? I mean, what was used to suspend Chihiro was something he has been using in the library. So, put two and two together. What could it be? difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? <laughs> when I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya. Where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Bull crap! God Obviously, damn it! Somebody else must have had it here. <laughs> I hate you, dumb turd. The difference you want me to explain when I want to kill, and I use those things. But to hear it was some kind of. That's right. It absolutely. Then there must be something very. Fishy. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Bull. I would continue that sentence, but yeah, just finish it for me, why don't you? Actually, 
I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Bingo Yaku, bullseye. You've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time? Went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Ding, ding, ding. Then Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. Yeah, fess up, Togami. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? Yeah. He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even in not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. <laughs> he kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. He is a big turd. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girl's locker room, but does that mean... Can I really just accept what Byakuya said is the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about what he said. I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakia, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? Yep, you did. When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakia, who'd been so confident until now, maybe Byakia never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys' and girls' locker rooms. It was the posters. I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was... a picture of a big boob supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? Yeah, because I'm into hot dudes, so I mean... I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had... 
the super dreamy boy band Tornado. A poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Choice of words, Makoto. Choice of words. You can say they're dreamy. It's okay. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? Yep, the protein coffee stain. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. Oops. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Well, gee whiz, I wonder! To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. You really think that, Celeste? Because, I mean... I won't say anything more. No, she did have a way! And I can tell you what it was! I highly doubt that. <laughs> Shut up! I'm telling you! I know how she could have done it! Is he right? Could you hear really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Is it really possible? Could Chikiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What then? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. Except it was no, broken. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. Exactly. So then, she must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... 
Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? Nope. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya! Wow, Taka. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya's the one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. And with that, I will end this episode here. And we will continue this trial in the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all take care.